Let's imagine you would like to integrate your custom e-commerce workflow with Sailor. Instead of changing Sailor itself, you can use Sailor apps. Sailor apps allow you to add a custom user interface in the Sailor dashboard or to react to changes that happen in Sailor. For example, you would like to be notified when an order is created so that you can trigger a specific flow with your custom logic. Sailor provides many apps that integrate with popular services and tools, but it is also very easy to create your own Sailor app. So let's see how we can create the simplest possible Sailor app and let's discuss its structure. We'll be using Sailor CLI to start. I will be using the app template command and with the name of my app. So in this case, let's, let's call it Sailor app. So this will fetch our template, which provides almost everything you would need to create a Sailor app and it will install dependencies. So the template is based on, is using Next.js. So yeah, we have it done. So let's go into the directory. Let's just run it and let's see how it behaves. So it, and open that. So it just displays the welcome page describing the structure and some links to the documentation. So that's the first step. The second step is that we need to expose that app publicly on the internet because we would like to install that into our Sailor instance. So I have this instance over here and I would like to now add this app. So I cannot add it from localhost. I just need, I need to tunnel it. So Sailor provides, Sailor CLI provides a command for that. It's app tunnel. And in order to use this command, you need to have ngrok installed. So this is ngrok, which allows you to create tunnels. And we use it uh, to create a tunnel for Sailor apps. So you have to download that and install it on your computer. For example, in my case, I'm using macOS, so you can just do brew install ngrok. And once you have that, you can start a tunnel. As you can see, I have my public URL over here. And it also says installing, which is kind of interesting. So because I only have one Sailor organization and one Sailor environment, it detects that and it installs that Sailor app directly to my uh, dashboard. So before we go and see how it, how it works, let me just open that public URL so that you see that this is exactly the same page uh, as we have in localhost. Now, once we have that, it shows us also this URL that it installed that into our uh, dashboard. So I can open that. And now, as you can see, it's almost identical except this little button here. So Sailor apps are meant to be installed into, into Sailor. So now the app is aware that it's being installed inside Sailor and because of that context, it can provide you with some additional things. So we have this button and now we can showcase some things you can do. So for example, I can interact with this dashboard and I can trigger a notification for the dashboard itself, the one I'm, I, I installed the app in, or I can do some redirects to orders. So directly from my new app, I'm re redirecting to the built-in order section in the dashboard. Or I can fetch some data from this dashboard instance, from this Sailor instance. So for example, I can use some GraphQL query, custom query, and I can, for example, ask for the, what's the last order? And in my case, it's 23 with some information about how many items there are, the total, etc. And I can go there with the link again to see that uh, specific order. So I can do some actions, I can fetch data, and finally I can have webhooks. As we said at the beginning, I can react to some things. So if there's a new order, maybe I would like to be notified, maybe there should be an email being sent or some custom logic. So a webhook is an example of a webhook is being already configured for us in this template. And we can 
maybe start with that. Let's open Pages API and Webhooks. And we have this simple order create webhook pre-configured for us. So the first thing it has is the handler, which is the actual logic that will happen when Sailor triggers that uh, URL. It does some console log and then it creates a client. Maybe we'd like to do some interaction with the Sailor API and, and do some things here. And then we respond with HTTP 200. So maybe let's see if it works. So in order to verify that, I need to just create a new order. And if everything works, I should see in the logs this order was created message. So let me go here. Let's create an order, order 24. And I need to add some products. So maybe this black hoodie. And let me add a customer. So maybe Connor. And I need to define the address and the billing address for the for shipping. And now I can finalize it. So I have order 24 and the shipping methods. Let's see DHL. And now I can finalize it. So it's created. And here on the right, uh, you can see that order was created. So this custom logic was triggered. And also if we go back to apps, to our app, now the last order is order 24, the one that we just created. So this is a webhook. The webhook is created using the Sailor Async webhook uh, class, which comes from Sailor App SDK. So when you are creating your Sailor apps, you're using App SDK, which gives you some convenience methods to interact with Sailor. And, and then when we uh, create a webhook, we also create a subscription query. Because when we are receiving some payloads to our webhook, we will be receiving the whole order, which can be a huge uh, payload for each order. There may be many fields uh, defined, but we are not interested in all of them. We just want to have a subset so we can define which fields you would like to receive each time there is a event being uh, sent to our webhook. And we, we can define that we are only interested in those fields over here. And then we define this as a fragment. We use that fragment inside our subscription query. And this subscription query is passed to our uh, webhook class. We define which events we are listening to, what's the, uh, the path, and then we define that handler, which for now only displays in this, uh, in this template the console log. So that's the first thing, webhooks. The second thing, which is probably the most important thing, is that we have two files. The one is register, generated for us, and usually we don't need to uh, change that, and manifest, which defines uh, our seller app which is the name, the URL, and permissions, which is something important because our app can do certain things that require certain permissions, and we need to define which permissions are needed for this app to operate. Uh, and when you install app, it will say which exact permission permissions you need uh, to run this app. And then we define the webhooks. So for example, here for the template is being automatically uh, done for you when you create a new webhook using this convenience method, it's now added to the webhooks field. And then we can add some extensions, uh, define some metadata, like who is the author of that. When you go back to your app URL and you say API manifest, you will have this JSON created for us. So it corresponds to, to that. So we have the permission and then the webhook part is generated. Uh, as you can see, it's the subscription query that was uh, defined over here and the webhook part. And then the name, the target URL. So when there is a payload, it should be sent to this URL. That's the reason it has to be um, public and the events that it listens to. So in our case, order create. So whenever you are ready to go to production, you would need to change that from ngrok to your proper domain. So you have to deploy it somewhere, for example, 
we are using Next.js so we can deploy it to Vercel or any other place and then those webhooks will be uh, available. And to finish off, uh, I can also remove the app. if I'm no longer interested in having this custom logic in my instance. And let's say I change my mind so I can also install it directly from the dashboard. So I need to just copy the URL, the public URL. So if I'm doing uh, local development, I will be using ngrok URL or any other tunnel. And I need to specify the API manifest here at the, at the end. And it should detect that there is a Sailor app here. It will ask me for the permissions, right? The ones that we are defining in the uh, manifest. The required ones. And then I can confirm. I can install the app. Yeah, it works. So it again, we're back. We can trigger things, redirect. We can do some queries and, and we can react to events using webhooks. So that's a short intro. In the next videos, we will dive into specific things.